when you're on your back in your guard, it can be difficult to take rips because it's hard to reach. You should try to be on your butt as much as possible so you can take rips. As my opponent approaches, I'm already on my butt and ready to take rips. In this case, the collar and sleeve and then I fall to my back. I then transition to the lasso grip. These grips would have been hard to get if I was on my back to start. You also have the option to play sit up guard instead of falling to your back once you have grips. Starting on your butt gives you more options. When in side control, make sure to have your toes engaged on the mat so you can drive into your opponent. If you don't, they can drive into you easier. And if they can drive into you easier, then they can escape easier. People use their hands to defend and prevent submissions. You want to take their hands out of the equation so you can make offense easier for yourself. In this paper cutter choke, if I didn't block my opponent's hand with my foot first, it definitely would have been harder to secure my grip and finish. Not impossible, just harder. In most cases, it'll be your feet or legs that block their grips and the back is a great example. I trap their arms and making my one hand against their none. The more tactically you can make your jujitsu an unfair fight, the better. A common mistake I see people make all the time is they knock their opponent down, but they don't control the legs and their opponent gets right back up, resulting in no sweep. If you control their legs and prevent their feet from touching the mat, then it's literally impossible for them to stand back up. I mean, try standing without your feet on the mat. It's literally a prerequisite to standing. Every time I sweep someone, I control the legs. It should become muscle memory and instinctual for you. Jiu Jitsu is a grip battle and you need to get used to breaking grips. Not all grips, just grips that stop you from doing what you want to do. Like in this case, my opponent's left grip isn't stopping me from doing anything that I want to do. It's his right hand controlling my leg. Once the grip is broken, the sweep is easy. And look what I do as I finish the sweep, I control the legs. Speaking of grips, it's critical to have grips so you can control your opponent. Look what happens when my opponent doesn't have grips on me. It's an easy sweep because I'm not being controlled. Whether it be top or bottom, you absolutely need grips. Why is it easy for me to pass this brand new white belt's guard? It's not black belt magic, it's his lack of grips. To escape leg locks, the most important concept is to clear the knee line. Once the knee line is cleared, you're basically 99% out of danger. This is the only real thing I think about when defending leg locks. It's how do I get their hips below my knee instead of above. The same concept applies throughout all leg entanglements, and the same for escaping arm bars, kimuras, and americanas too. If you focus on how to clear your elbow past their hips or point of control, then it'll be much easier than just thinking, how do I get my arm out of here? You need to keep your hands off the mat for two reasons. Your hand won't be controlling your opponent if it's on the mat, and you leave yourself vulnerable to attack. Like in this triangle, I force my opponent's hand to the mat because I know it'll separate his arm from his body and leave him vulnerable to the triangle. Knowing it's a threat, if you accidentally put your hand on the mat, you need to get it off of there right away. Like here, I post on the mat to stop the sweep and bring it back inside as soon as I feel the triangle threat. You can't accept getting taken down or swept. You need to fight hard to get back on top if you get knocked down. In a tournament, they won't get their two points if you get back up right away, and in my opinion, it's much better to be on top anyways. It's not over until it's over. If there's one tip I know will 100% improve your jujitsu right away, it's do not let people People grab your head. This should be your biggest priority. Where the head goes, the body must follow. Unless your opponent is a zombie, but that presents its own problems. If my head does get grabbed, it becomes my only objective to get the grip off of me, so I can move freely and do the things that I want to do, things I couldn't do with my head controlled. Inside position is most importantly the space between your armpit to your knee and your shoulder to your neck, but really it's your arms and legs too. We cannot let people have control of these spaces. Defending Turtle is a great example. If Nikki can gain control of inside position, then she can attack chokes and back takes. How do I defend this guillotine attempt? I keep my shoulder glued to my neck. This stops my opponent from getting under my neck from taking inside position. This is a cool case study. My one leg takes inside position between my opponent's shoulder and neck, and the other leg between the armpit and the knee. Acquiring inside position is what led to this armbar. Here I have inside position with my head and now underhook. My opponent's knee shield is a great example of inside position on me. Once I get past that, I have inside position with my knee, which leads to the knee slide pass. Now his T-Rex arms prevent me from getting more inside position on him. This may look silly, but T-Rex arms are super important. You need to keep your elbows glued to your body. This prevents inside position like getting your head grabbed or your partner taking an underhook. Look how as I pass my opponent's guard, he gets his T-Rex arms in right away. This makes it hard for me to control him because I can't grab his head. 
Even if I do get my head grabbed, at least my T-Rex arms will prevent the underhook. I can use one frame on the hip and the other to get an underhook for myself. T-Rex arms make escaping so much easier. Ignoring T-Rex arms and letting someone get the underhook like this is worst case Ontario. Very difficult to escape. As is reaching up in mount, T-Rexes can't reach up like that and neither should you. Elbows close to your body is a much safer way to escape. This goes for pretty much any position, these are just some examples. Underhooks are almost always a good idea. They can be used for such a variety of offense, like this back take or like how I wrestled the top position here. They can be used for sweeps, they can be used for passes, they can also be used for takedowns. They're so versatile and powerful because they're an example of inside position. You want to go path of least resistance as much as possible. Just like Bruce Lee says, be like water. Find your openings. When faced with resistance one way, go the other way. This will make you much more technical over time. I could have finished the guillotine here, but the omoplata was the easier path. I could have stopped my opponent from rolling, but the armbar was the easier path. This is my strained face. Pretty, right? You want to use it as little as possible. I mean, you still have to use it, just the less you strain and the more you can flow, the better. When getting choked with any choke, you need to protect your neck. I mean, Wu-Tang even has a song dedicated to this. It's priority number one, fight the hands. You cannot reach down for the hooks unless your neck is protected. That's how I choked both these guys. They went for the hooks instead of the hands. But here, reaching down for my hook is okay because my opponent has control of my choking hand. As he escapes, I just take his back again with the Kimura grip. The Kimura trap guide is still coming by the way. Watch how I escape this Star's choke. Like in previous videos, I mentioned I don't have a thousand escapes memorized, I just fight the hands. Concepts are way more important than individual techniques. My channel is very conceptual, so please subscribe and leave a like or comment if you haven't already. To win scrambles, you need to keep your hips higher than your opponent's hips. As I get arm dragged, I just focus on keeping my hips higher, which keeps my opponent's hips down and unable to come up for the back take. Here I use my butterfly hook to lift up my opponent's leg in the air, which stops his hips from lifting. Once I get my hips higher, I've won the positional battle. I almost get swept here and my only focus is to get my hips higher. Once I do, I get back to my feet. You want to keep your butt down to have a low center of gravity. Once your butt comes up and off your heels, you're much lighter and easier to be swept. Although all the way up with your hips engaged can be very good as well. See how my opponent approaches with her butt up? I'm able to get her weight loaded perfectly above my hips using my feet. This makes the sweep very easy. Even on this much larger opponent, it's not much of a strain. Loading people's hips above yours makes them light. You want them on or past your center line. Look how I shoot my hips underneath my opponent. The more he goes past my center line, the lighter he becomes. Loading the hips means getting their weight on top of your hips. Think about this concept and I know your sweeps will improve. If you were pulling Excalibur's sword out of the stone, you'd have to use your feet as wedges. Same thing for when something is stuck in jujitsu, you need to use a wedge to pry it out. Like here, I used my left foot to pry my opponent's grip off my pants. Now I'm able to move freely now that I'm not being controlled by that grip. You want to break posture in your guard, which means keeping your opponent's head down. It really limits the mobility of your opponent and makes it hard for them to pass or do anything really. Meanwhile, you can attack from broken posture or use them posturing up against them to set up an attack. Like right here, I let my opponent posture as I enter into leg entanglement. Alright, thanks for sticking around until the end of the video. Let me know what your favorite tip was. Also, I do have a Patreon if you're interested in supporting the channel.